in 2012, at the races, followed the fortunes of four two-year-old horses. We met them before they ran. We saw them at home, in training, and on the race course. One year on, we return to see what became of the class of 2012 and where they are now. Of the four, we've still got Outbid, the auction house filly, and Excellent Puck, the uh, Excellent Art gelding. Uh, um, the other two um, are both on the continent. Hardy Red, um, he went to Belgium, um, actually as did Devout. So, um, and they're both racing out there now. Yeah. Let's, chat, let's chat about those two, actually, since we won't see them today. Because mm. uh, they started on the same day, if memory serves, Hardy yeah. Red and um, yeah. Devout at Bath. Both ran OK. I, I, Hardy Red, we were more encouraged by. Uh, we put a brave run. face on it, didn't we? Well, but they I were both a bit disappointed. I was more encouraged by Hardy Red, whereas <laughs> the filly was disappointing. Yeah. But, but different, different career paths from there, because of course Hardy Red next time runs an absolute corker against a very good horse. Yes, and clearly that was the uh, you know, the highlight of his season. <laughs> no, he did win after that, but ultimately he was disappointing. Um, he never quite achieved what I thought he would achieve. And then in the end he did deteriorate a little bit. We took him to the horses in training sale, he, and he'd won his nursery at Boss Lass, and he kind of had a mid-70s rating. I thought he would sell all right, but he didn't. So we brought him back and then we tried to use claimers um, here. And, but realistically, he was, he was in need of a break. Um, we were adamant we, we didn't want to keep him another year. Um, we wanted to get a sale for him. So we tried to force the issue a little bit and it didn't work. So consequently, we ended up not getting the sort of financial result with him that we'd hoped for. Um, but, you know, he's gone on and he's racing out there, so... Your options were very limited with him. And I think had we known what was going to happen through the autumn, I would have used claimers with him earlier. Um, but I was still hoping that I was going to unlock a little bit more out of him. Uh, but the reality was that it couldn't be done. That's, that's all there was. Or I couldn't do it. <laughs> the filly devout yeah. started on the same day at Bath, but her first few runs didn't, didn't show nearly as much... As, as, as Hardy Red did initially, but in the end that may have, may have helped her case because you managed to win three on the spin with her. Yeah, I mean it was quite clear um, after Bath that um, again she wasn't going to be as good as we hoped she was going to be. So for me the ob obvious thing to do was to go down on the nursery route. Um, I felt that she wasn't quite taking what we were giving her at that time. Um, but I didn't want to put her away without a handicap mark. So we did give her the three runs relatively quickly, and she came out with a mark in the 50s, which was all she deserved on what she'd done. Um, I can't remember, I think we had a bit of a setback in, in the autumn with her when she, we were going to play her then, and we had to wait until the winter. Um, and I thought that she was a good thing off her mark first time out, but like all good things, she finished second. Um, and then she, she had a little run of getting placed um, and a mark was creeping up and I was starting to think we'd blown it. I was starting to think, you know, every time you finish placed and don't win and you creep up a little bit more, you make your life a bit harder for the next time. And then we f she luckily just found a little vein of form where she won a couple of handicaps. I felt then that Possibly the mark she was going to be asked to compete off was going to be too much for her. So we dropped her into a claimer, uh, which she won. Devout now has got clear running and is sailing down this near side, taking aim at this leader, and Devout is sweeping on by. Devout for Fergus Sweeney goes on to score. And it's Devout who's going away now from Sam Grouse in second. Big gap back to Padit Georgia in third. Doubles for Jamie Osborne and Fergus Sweeney as Devout wins the last... Devout has the lead as they race inside the final 100 yards and will make it three wins in a row. Sublimation was closing in but blew it by going wide on the turn and Devout the winner. And the opportunity came to sell her after that and you know I could have gone to the well once more and she might well have won another claimer um, but 
the right money came along for her, so she went. How important is it to be able to, to sell at the right point when, when the offer comes? Is, is it? Oh, it's vital. It's vital, and we wouldn't be alive if we didn't do that. You know, why not, why not take advantage of a secondary market um, and hopefully reinvest in a new one and roll the dice again? You know, we might get luckier next time. You know, we hope, you know, all the time, to a degree, what we're doing is we're sifting. And we are trying to find those horses whose ability is greater than, you know, th than the average. Um, and s sadly, in those two horses' case, they were ordinary. So, two of the team are now racing and winning in Belgium. But what of the other two? Last time we visited, after various frustrating delays, Outbid was nearly ready to race. She had niggly little problems, other than being kicked, which one wouldn't expect, but I mean, you know, she had niggly little problems through a two-year-old uh, year, which isn't uncommon. You know, a lot of those were to do with development. She was a filly that hadn't been through the sales ring and hadn't had a sales prep, so everything was just kind of... Sometimes those horses, they're just, you know, they are prone to just taking a little bit more time. Um, and then I kind of th thought we'd sort of got her where we wanted her, um, and she won a maiden at Linkfield. Outbid is going to get off the mark here and win for Leona Mayer and Jamie Osborne. It was a very ordinary race, but, but she won it OK. And then she came back and flopped a couple of times. And uh, whereas without, with Devout, I kind of knew that time wasn't going to improve her, so it was the time to get out. With her, I felt that time might improve her, and there was just a chance that by giving her that time, she would justify a, you know, a bit of faith. And her work has been good, you know. But as you know, she she showed us plenty of pace last year, um, and she's showing us, you know, she's still showing that pace. I hope she's just a bit stronger, a bit more mature, and consequently, she will prove to be well handicapped. I'm not totally certain about that. You know, we've started down this route and we're sort of sticking with it. And it could be that in two months' time I will discover, we will discover that she didn't justify giving that time to. But, you know, there's, whoop, there's still a chance. As you can see, she's changed shape a little bit since you last saw her. Um, this time last year she was sort of, you know, a little bit squat and quite wide and looked like a sort of strongish little two-year-old. Now she's got a bit more, she's, she's lengthened and she's sort of more rangy looking filly. Ultimately, she's going to be a trade. You know, I, I would be absolutely shocked if she were here this time next year. At some stage during this summer, we will feel that we've done what we can do for the time being. Um, and maybe she won't justify an extra stay because we don't think she's going to improve sufficiently but you know there will be other places in the world where she, her ability can be better utilized um, you know not everybody has our system and you know there will be places she can go where she could keep winning races um, but it probably won't be in England the fourth member of the team was bigger than his peers but slower to find his feet Excellent Puck was a longer-term project who needed more time to develop physically, and he wouldn't make the race course until January of 2013. The pick the near side, it's Jimmy the Snooze in front, but Black Dave, the latest challenger, and it's just about going to get there. Black Dave for Adam Kirby and David Evans, an inform duo, beats Jimmy the Snooze, tight for the next spot with Shale in, and what a booty. That ran a very promising race. Excellent Puck made some headway. We tried to win a maiden with him. Uh, on the all weather, you know, he arrived at that time of year where maidens, it was possible to win them. Uh, and he was unlucky, he was second a couple of times, and he was second to quite a good horse of Charlie Hills's filly at Wolverhampton. And then after that, I kind of felt that we were sort of, you know, we had the capabilities, we just didn't need to run into one of those again. So I sent him to Subtle for what I thought was a kind of fairly ordinary maiden. He started favour for it. And he got beaten. So I bumped into another decent horse, probably. Though. Yeah, it probably wasn't too bad. And we and we probably threw the race away a little bit. Probably made a bit too much use of him. And and um, Southall wouldn't exactly. He he didn't love Southall. 
I kind of knew that going there, but I still thought we'd get away with it. Um, so then he came out after his three runs with a 70. And then we were at that time of year where 70 was no longer going to be a, a, a good enough. You know, you weren't going to win a maiden with a 70 horse at that point. So we waited for a 0 to 70 handicap. And then the old boy went and won it rather too well um, and sent us up to 76. I was rather hoping that we would have had two runs below the 75 mark, in which case I think he probably could have won another one. Poor. So we sent him, with that in mind, 76 is a horrible mark to be on. Um, because? So, uh, because you're in that better bracket, you know, and with a three-year-old at this... Above the 75. Uh, yeah. With a three-year-old at this time of year, if you're running in a 0 to 80, 0 to 85, you are possibly going to run into a horse that will end up the season rated 100. Uh, this horse isn't going to do that, but you know you're probably going to run into. Oh, and certainly, improving horses are going to be in there. So you need to be well in front of your mark to win one of those. Um, so we sent him to Chester. Um, we were biting off more than we could chew at that time. Uh, but you know, as we've said before, failure gets rewarded, and he was rewarded with the pound off. So we're now back in the 0 to 75 bracket. There's a couple of 0-75 possibles coming up for him. There's some classified 0-75s, which clearly are going to suit him. Um, so we'll see how we get on. But I hope we will now get back, sort of, getting competitive again. Also, Chester was his first run on grass. Um, and we hadn't been able to work these horses too much on grass this spring because it was, you know, there wasn't any grass growth and there wasn't a lot of rain. The ground was quite quick. So he wouldn't have had that much experience of it before he went to Chester but ultimately he is an alright horse he will end up being rated over 80 he, he, he'll play somewhere between a mile and a quarter and a mile and a half and as you can see he's big um, and he's very well put together he will improve as the year goes on I doubt whether we'll have him this time next year, but I think he will be doing something quite successful for somebody else. It could even be that he's a three-year-old hurdler. You know, he's got that amount of scope. Um, he'll, you know, if he has a rating in the sort of mid-80s come the autumn, having one a mile and a quarter, mile and a half, with his physique, he's going to be worth a few quid to do that. So he will be a nice prospect. Um, obviously, the only justification for us to keep him would be if we thought he was going to progress into being a 100-plus horse. I think at the moment that's unlikely, but he could still be, you know, he could do that other job very well. In the space of 12 months, our little band of hopefuls has progressed from unraced babies to fully-fledged racehorses. All have won races, something the majority of racehorses will fail to do, but none has quite reached the heights of their trainers' hopes for them. But then, hope is the fuel that powers the whole sport. It's what motivates everyone who's ever wrestled with the question of how to make a racehorse.